I'm Lynn Martinez. And I'm Craig Stevens. 7 News First at 5 starts right now. Live from South Florida's news station, WSVN 7. This is 7 News at 5 o'clock. Three years and 15 days after being forced into exile, Haitian President Jean-Bertrand Aristide finally returns home. Good evening again. Tonight, the celebrating continues from Port-au-Prince to right here in South Florida. It is a return many thought would never actually happen and possibly a sign of better times for Haiti as the United Nations just announces minutes ago that they are lifting the crippling economic sanctions against Haiti. This coming a day earlier than expected, but just hours after Jean-Bertrand Aristide is brought back to power. This very historic day beginning at Andrews Air Force Base outside of Washington, D.C., Aristide boarding a plane accompanied by Secretary of State Warren Christopher, civil rights leaders, and other dignitaries. At dawn, joyous Haitians poured into the streets to welcome back their president. The crowds, no longer fearing military crackdowns, singing and chanting their support for Aristide and the United States. And at last, shortly after noontime, the long-awaited arrival President Aristide arriving at the airport in Port-au-Prince. He later spoke to thousands of cheering supporters in front of the presidential palace. This day is the day on which the sun of democracy has arisen to never set. We, of course, have live Team 7 coverage from South Florida to Port-au-Prince on this very historic day for Haiti. We begin now with 7's Olga Viverde with tremendous reaction from Little Haiti. Olga. Lynn, we're so used to seeing peaceful protests out here in Little Haiti, but today, a totally different picture. Little Haiti looks more like a mega street party. At least 5,000 Haitians are out here, and they've been out here all day long, singing, dancing, and celebrating their long-awaited victory. live TV, they saw him land in Haiti, and the celebration here began. The streets of little Haiti, definitely a sight to see. Thousands upon thousands of Haitians dancing, singing, and cheering Aristide's name. Viva Aristide! Viva Democracy! I'd be happy just because my president going back to the power. It's been a three-year dream many of these people thought would never come true, but indeed now a reality. I'm proud to see Aristide back to power. Now we hope it's going to be better for the future. And it is a future these people have been waiting for for so long. Right now several bands are playing and we understand they'll be here all night long. And the party, we also understand, will continue throughout the entire weekend. We will also have another update for you at 6 o'clock. Live in Little Haiti, I'm Olga Villaverde, 7 News. Olga, thank you very much. 7's John Turchin has been following this story also in Haiti for the past week now. And our Team 7 coverage will continue in about five minutes with a live report from John just as soon as the satellites open up. Well, this day of celebrating for a while anyway overshadows the turmoil that makes up Haiti's history. February 1991, Aristide is sworn in as Haiti's president and immediately announces the reorganization of Haiti's army. But just seven months later, in September of 91, he's overthrown in a military coup. Then, in July of 1993, Aristide and coup leader Raul Cedras sign a UN agreement calling for Aristide's return and Cedras's resignation. But later that month, Cedras backs out of the deal and the UN Security Council authorizes use of force, clearing the way for a U.S.-led invasion. And last month, U.S. troops begin the occupation of Haiti and Wednesday, Raul Cedras flees Haiti in a chartered jet and heads for Panama. Well, the successful return of Aristide is earning President Clinton points with the American public, at least to a new poll. A new time CNN poll says 55% of Americans support the presence of U.S. troops in Haiti. That's up from just 38% last month. 54% now say President Clinton is doing a good job handling the situation in Haiti. That's a 14-point gain. And now a majority of Americans say they believe democracy will prevail in Haiti. Well, speaking of the president, Hillary Clinton's brother, bringing in the big guns for his campaign. In the next hour, President Clinton will be in Miami, pushing very hard to get Hugh Rodham in the U.S. Senate. Seven's Juan Fernandez is live at Miami International Airport, where Air Force One will touch down very shortly. Juan. That's right, Lynn. The president and the first lady are scheduled to arrive here at Miami International Airport in about an hour. And if you take a look behind me over here, plenty of security and secret service agents on hand to make sure that everything goes smoothly. 
Now, Bill Clinton and his wife Hillary are here in support of Democratic U.S. Senate candidates. One of those, as you said, is Hillary's own brother, Hugh Rodham. Tonight, the first couple will attend a $10,000 a plate dinner to help raise funds for Democratic candidates. What you're looking at right now is the limousine that uh, President Clinton and his wife will take to that fundraiser. For Rodham, it's an extremely tough race. He's currently running way behind the polls against incumbent Republican Connie Mack. Before the dinner, um, Rodham will hold a fundraiser over at the Port of Miami. That price is only $10 if you want to attend, but chances are you'll have a tough time getting in. Now, the last time we told you that the president was here in Miami was in July, and he was here with meeting with members of the uh, organizing the Summit of the Americas in December. Now, if he should arrive, he will be descending this staircase that you see right behind me. We will, of course, come back live right away and let you know what's happening out here. For now, from Miami International Airport, I'm Juan Fernandez, 7 News. Juan, thanks very much. Other news tonight, that baby who suffered a terrible torture, allegedly at the hands of his own father, remains in critical condition tonight at the Broward General Medical Center. Fort Lauderdale police say the infant was raped by his father. 23-year-old Frank Beltran is now being held without bond, charged with sexual battery on a child. The case has the community outraged. Many say Beltran should be hanged for his alleged crime. Miami Beach police tonight still looking for 10 stolen blood samples, blood tainted with the virus that causes AIDS. The samples were taken from a private lab's night depository box Wednesday. Health officials fear in the wrong hands the HIV-tainted blood will pose a deadly health risk. The thief also stole confidential patient information. Anyone with information is asked to call the Miami Beach police. Some Cuban Americans come together today to call attention to the ongoing crisis in their homeland. Members of the Free Cuba Foundation staged a candlelight vigil outside of Prome Detention Center last night. Demonstrators say they want to keep the refugees at Guantanamo Bay in Cuba in the forefront of everyone's mind. And back now to our top story tonight, the return of exiled President Aristide to Haiti. The prayers, the speeches, and the celebrating have continued all day long now. I understand we've just been able to establish our satellite connection, so we want to turn it over to 7's John Turchin, who is in the middle of all the action for us. John. Well, Greg, in the words of jean Bertrand Aristide, what a beautiful day this is. Three years and 15 days after Aristide was exiled, he returns and is back on the job. He is warmly received, no acts of violence, and he arrives, as you are about to see, in style. Talk about grand entrances, folks. A military escort taking him from the airport to the National Palace by chopper, where, as you can see, and may be able to hear tens of thousands of people, supporters, I think it's safe to say, enthusiastically greeted him. Just a few minutes earlier, he took his first step on Haitian soil since the coup when his plane touched down at the airport. Now, during his speech, he told the crowd that we are all thirsty for peace. He renewed his pledge, saying that no to violence, no to vengeance, and yes to reconciliation. And then, for all of us to hear, he thanked the U.S., President Bill Clinton, and enthusiastically took office again. How great it is to be participating in a process that will strengthen the historic bonds that tie us and to promote together the cause of democracy in the Western Hemisphere. And tonight, more good news for Aristide and the Haitian people. The United Nations has announced today that they will lift, effective tomorrow, the embargo that has so crippled the Haitian people for so many years, meaning that they will be able to freely trade again. And that basically means that Come Monday morning, for example, gas will be at the pumps here. Lynn, Craig? John Turton reporting live from uh, Port-au-Prince, Haiti. Thank you very much. We'll talk to John again at 6 o'clock. Switching gears right now, one day after a kidnapped Israeli soldier is killed and violence breaks out again in Israel, Palestinians took to the streets today after hearing that three of the kidnappers were killed in that rescue attempt. The kidnappers are radical Palestinians with the group called Hamas. On Friday, Israeli soldiers tried to free that kidnapped soldier, but during the raid, the soldier held hostage was killed, along with a second soldier and three of his kidnappers. More news ahead tonight from the news flex at 5 o'clock. Three little girls found living in squalor. Now their parents are in big trouble. The story topping our look at news around the nation. Police find a woman living with the rotting remains of her mother. Cops in the Midwest fighting something besides crime. This time, it's the Battle of the Ball. And it's beginning to look a lot like winter in some parts to the west. We'll take it there when 7 News at 5 comes back.
in sports, brought to you in part by Arby's Go West. It's better out here. Real cowboy boots, get back to my roots. With friends are true, and so's the barbecue. Slow roasted beef is just the start of our 99 cent barbecue. Then we simmer that beef for a long spell in authentic barbecue sauce, and Arby's tops it with a 99 cent prize, but not for long. Real barbecue under a buck. Hope you got a working truck. Arby's, it's better out here. our free brochure today. Over the past four years, 75,000 criminals have been released early. Our governor has signed only 17 death warrants. For the first time, we're spending more on welfare than on education, wasting hundreds of millions on mismanagement. Lawton Childs' answer? Higher taxes. Another two and a half billion dollars. It's time for a change. To make criminals serve at least 85% of their sentences. To limit welfare. And for people to have the right to vote on all tax increases. Jeb Bush for governor. New cars have always been newsworthy. But this year, some really amazing things have been going on. There's big news about the 95 Toyotas. Now, get a 95 Camry for less than a 94. Lease one for just $2.29 a month. $2.29 a month and get automatic transmission, dual airbags, air conditioning, AM FM cassette, power steering, power windows and locks, and more. This year is looking very good for Toyota and very good for you. 7 News closed captioning for the hearing impaired is brought to you in part by aluminum roll-up shades and shutters. Our look at news around the nation begins tonight in California. That's where police in San Jose find three little girls living in a house of filth. Investigators say the children lived among mosquitoes, rats, roaches, and contaminated food. Police also claim the kids played outside in manure and alongside sick or dead animals. Tonight, the girls' grandparents and mother are under arrest. All of them charged with child endangerment. Also in California tonight, police find a woman living with the decomposing remains of her own mother. Neighbors called police when the smell became unbearable. Police have not yet identified the body, but they do believe it is the woman's 77-year-old mother. Police found the body loosely wrapped in trash bags and a newspaper. The daughter is now undergoing psychological evaluation. Ohio, no pigs on this police force. At least that's the aim of a new diet program designed to keep cops and other city workers in good shape. The concept is simple. It's hard to battle crime when you're losing the battle of the bulge. So police officers are being told to cut out the chips, the pretzels and donuts, and start eating right. Back to California now. They're dressed to kill and flying first class all the way. A couple of penguins now touring schools to show kids up close what penguins are really like. The penguins were looking rather cruel as guests at the Hilton Hotel in Los Angeles. Just one stop on their cross-country tour. Time for 7 Weather. Hello everybody, I'm Bill Kamal and we have just experienced our driest day since last spring. But all good things must come to an end. This one will come to an end rather quickly. I'll explain why. 84 in Miami, relative humidity only 48%, dew points in the low 60s, and that northwesterly wind at 13 miles per hour. Look at the temperatures to our north, only 64 in Jacksonville right now. Keep that in mind, I'll get to that in just a second. 84 Fort Myers, Miami. 83 in Key West. The Keys have had an unsettled pattern. You know what lake effect snows are? That's when cold air comes over the warm lake waters. Well, the cool air coming over the warm gulf waters and the Atlantic waters have created bands of showers over the Keys today. They'll be slow to clear out tonight, but the mainland is on the clear side. Now, here's the reason why Jacksonville is only 64. Look at all these low clouds. There's a huge storm system spinning out in the Atlantic and a very large fair weather system building out of eastern Canada. There's a north-northeasterly wind developing by late tonight and tomorrow along the Florida coast. Heavy surf advisories and coastal flood watches out from Savannah, Georgia to east-central Florida around Jupiter Inlet. Nothing for us yet, but there's a developing gale out in the Atlantic. That combined with a huge fair weather system will create strong winds. And once those winds turn northeast tomorrow and tomorrow night, 
12 hours after those winds usually turn northeast, we start to get clouds in here coming in off the Atlantic. So tomorrow may start off nice, but by the end of the day, and certainly by tomorrow night and Monday, not too nice at all. Meanwhile, speaking of not nice, the entire western half of the country is governed by a huge winter storm system that'll be plaguing them for the next several days. But there's that area of high pressure and the low out to sea, and the combination of those two systems giving us very breezy to windy conditions late tomorrow, tomorrow night, and into Monday. Nothing is going to really change much. That high will be stuck along the east coast, and we'll continue to see that breeze. Tomorrow's UV index 6, that is moderate. Sun comes up at 720, down at 652. Mostly clear and cool tonight. Clouds and showers slow to clear in the Keys, low of 69 by morning. Tomorrow, some sun, but getting cloudy toward late in the day, becoming breezy. There could be a few coastal showers drifting in from the Atlantic. High of only 84, and a small craft advisory may be necessary tomorrow with north-northeasterly winds, 20 knots and higher seas building to 5 to 7 feet, higher in the Gulf Stream surf temperature at 83. More on this uh, wind coming in at 6 o'clock. See you then, Craig. Thanks, Bill. Other parts of the country not faring well at all weather-wise. Parts of Georgia still trying to recover from nature's fury after floodwaters ravaged parts of Savannah. Waters are finally beginning to recede now, and the frustration there is beginning to set in as people try to clean up the mess. Some areas of Savannah sat underwater, waist-deep water, that is, for more than a day. And in northern Idaho, nature showing some encouraging signs for the skiers there. The Sandpoint Resort getting a few inches of the white stuff. The first hint of winter for them. Just ahead tonight on 7 News, first 5 o'clock, Rolling Stone fans go to a violent extreme for concert tickets. The story is making people news. Country star Reba McIntyre now has one fan who is really out of this world. The guitarist for Guns N' Roses is going after the rumor mill. Is it the end of Axel or a new solo for Slash? And later on at 6 o'clock, Team 7 coverage from Port-au-Prince to South Florida. You're now looking at live pictures of the celebrations going on right now in Little Haiti for the big return of Jean Bertrand Aristide back to power. That story at 6, 7 News at 5, though, coming back. You are watching 7 News at 5 with Lynn Martinez and Craig Stevens. If you're looking for trouble, you found it on the Fox Saturday Night lineup. First, cops takes you to the dark side of Tinseltown to crack a case that could only happen in Hollywood on a brand new Cops in L.A. Then, on America's Most Wanted, he was a neighborhood hero who put himself on the line more than once. But this time, he was in the line of fire against one of America's Most Wanted. A brand new episode tonight after Primetime Cops. You don't have to be rich to get a cellular phone from Bell South Mobility. Anytime balloons, you got it. You just have to want to be. Bell South Mobility, like you, we never stand still. And now here's a great way to get up to 7,500 minutes of free airtime from Bell South Mobility when you sign a multi year agreement. That's twice as many free airtime minutes as before. An offer this good is certainly cause for celebration. These numbers will get you online with the 7 News Data Center. Email your comments today. Hi, I'm Arnie Warren for Carl Springs Auto Mall, where every 94 must go by the end of the month. It's our final closeout of 94 Honda, Nissan, Oldsmobile, GMC trucks. Every car tagged with unbeatable closeout prices. We're seeing special financing rates, lease programs, top dollar for your trade. Come in today and save. You'll say, they really do beat them all at Coral Springs Auto Mall, Atlantic Boulevard and University Drive, across from the Coral Square Mall. Coral Springs Auto Mall, we beat them all. It's like throwing a 12-foot rope to someone who's 15 feet away. Share your life. Share your decision.
Argentina just a little too excited to see the Rolling Stones. Thousands of fans waiting in a two-mile line to buy tickets to the Stones' first concert there. When a fight broke out, a 22-year-old man was killed after his throat was slit. People are very serious there about tickets to the concert. Fans had started to line up three days before the ticket booths actually opened up last night. Could it be puppy love between the star of Star Trek The Next Generation and singer Reba McIntyre? Well, sort of. Actor Patrick Stewart, who plays Captain Picard on Trek, says he's hooked on Ms. McIntyre. Stewart tells Movie Line magazine, anybody who can belt out something like, I walked into the kitchen, the silverware is gone, furniture is missing, <laughs> guess he got it all. He says that is his kind of woman. Hey, Guns N' Roses is still together, and you better not think otherwise. This coming from Slash himself. If you care at all, the lead guitarist for the rock group says that those breakup rumors are really, really ticking him off. Slash, though, just finished recording a solo album called It's Five O'Clock Somewhere, and that album will be in stores early next year. Seven Video Sports is next, and tonight we'll show you how the newest member of the Heat did in his big debut. And the ultimate showdown in the swamp between the Gators and the Tigers, Ken Rodriguez with Sports next. Weird retirees like Dave and Betty Jacobs get what it takes to cut their utility bills down to pension size? Let's go back to square one. Builder Square has money saving values on every energy saving product. Insulation, caulk and sealers, thermal windows, solid doors. Everything you need to keep energy costs from going through the roof is under one roof at great square deal prices. Be sure to wear gloves when handling insulation. Builder Square. They'll get you spread away. I'm Murray Lender, in the fresh bread aisle with my new Lender's Bagel Shop Bagels. My bagels are fresh and chewy right out of the bag, and they'll stay fresh even days after you buy them. So try my new Lender's Bagel Shop Bagels. Thanks, Murray. Deliciously fresh for days. Sorority Sister Calls wants you to be a bridesmaid. Oh, maybe. IRS calls. Wants to meet about those deductions. Yeah, maybe. Aunt Luffy calls. Sprinkles is graduating from obedience school. Says, you gotta be there. We've got low fares every day. Fly Air South today. There's no advance purchase, no Saturday night stay, no restrictions ever. Now you gotta go. Air South. Dear car owners, we do over 2 million brake jobs a year. We offer same-day brake service and guaranteed brake shoes and pads. So remember, Midas doesn't just mean mufflers. Saturn retailer to arrange lease terms and a test flight. I don't imagine I'll always be the only chicken place in town. I got a feeling it'll be popping up like dandelions. The Colonel was right, especially when it comes to rotisserie chicken restaurants. Still, no one has rotisserie chicken as good as the Colonel's rotisserie gold. So good that it's America's best-selling rotisserie chicken. Enjoy the KFC 2.99 meal with a leg thigh quarter of Colonel's rotisserie gold chicken. Individual order of mashed potatoes with gravy, coleslaw, and the biscuit. Just 2.99 only from KFC. If you give someone a good meal at a fair price, they'll come back to you. Time for seven video sports with Ken Rodriguez. My goodness, 18 games under head coach Terry Bowden and the Auburn Tigers still don't know how to lose. Even after a trip to the swamp to face the top-ranked Gators today, Auburn looking for a little respect and got it today. Brian Robinson rips Fred Taylor's cover off. That's how the game went. Auburn got on the board first. Nicks to Thomas Bailey. Nice catch in the end zone. 7-0 Gators trail for the first time this season. After an Auburn field goal, Gators came right back behind Terry Dean's pass to Jack Jackson. A 42-yard play, 10-7, still first quarter. Overall, a bad day for Dean. Here's the fourth of four interceptions, and Dean leaves the game. Enter Danny Werfel in the third quarter to lead the troops, and that he did. Werfel to Redell Anthony. Gators closed the gap 22-20. Later, it's Werfel to Ike Hilliard. And the Gators, just like that, had the lead back, 26-22. Tigers would not roll over in this one. Patrick Nix hits Andy Fuller for a 30-yard touchdown play, breaking some tackles along the way. 
And Auburn went back on top, 29-26. Gators still has some life left in them. Werfel to Jack Jackson for his third touchdown pass of the half. Gators seemingly in control. 51 seconds, fourth and 10 complete. Nix with another completion on the drive that wouldn't die. And with about 30 seconds left, Nix finds Frank Sanders for the game winner. Auburn wins at 36-33. Their 18th win in a row. They remain unbeaten. Gators fall to 5-1 and one with their first SEC loss in 18 tries at home. It was a good one. Miami Heat fans, you'll get another chance to catch the boys in action tonight at the West Palm Auditorium. They'll be going for two in a row against the Celtics to start the preseason. Though Last night, the rookie, Khalid Reeves, in his pro debut, takes it to the hoop. Scored only four points, but made David Wesley look silly. Just silly on this play. More importantly, Reeves had seven impressive assists, including this one to Matt Geiger. Needless to say, the Heat were impressed with the kid's performance. He did well. He did real well. It's, it's always nerve-wracking, especially when you play at home. Exhibition game at home is really tough because, you know, you, should, you have to play your best in front of your home fans. I talk to Reed everything he knows. I hope not. I talk to Reed everything he knows. Yeah, with Halloween coming up, that's a real scary thought. John Sally, the tutor. FIU's men's and women's hoop teams getting started for their 94-95 campaign. Some of the players still have the moves, while others have a little rust to work off. Hmm. All-American Andrea Naj is back for the Lady Golden Panthers. The team hopes to improve on last year's performance that included a trip to the NCAA tournament. I would be very disappointed at this point if we were not in the top 20. Uh, we have a returning team back and we deserve to be there and that's exactly where you want to be. I would hate to have to try to get in it through the season again. Uh, we'd like to be there in the beginning and uh, we plan on staying there. Spoken like a coach. That'll do for sports. Uh, how about Lynn and Craig? That'll do just fine. Thanks, Ken. <laughs> How about it? That is 7 News at 5 o'clock. Thanks for joining us. I'm Lynn Martinez. I'm Craig Stevens. Be sure to join us for continuing coverage on this historic day inside Haiti. In fact, thousands and thousands of people gathering in both Port-au-Prince and in Little Haiti to mark the return of Jean-Bertrand Aristide back to power. You were looking at live pictures of the celebration going on in Little Haiti. Our Olga Villaverde is there. John Church is in Port-au-Prince. We'll check back with both of them. We will have more on all of the developments today coming up in just one half hour on 7 News, 6 o'clock, and of course, a wrap-up tonight at 10 o'clock. We'll hope you join us then. We'll see you then. part by your South Florida Ford dealer and by the new Shell MasterCard from Chemical Bank. It's like money in the tank. Coming up next on 7 News at 6 o'clock, the moment many Haitians have been waiting for for three years. Jean Bertrand Aristide is back in Haiti. We'll take you live there to Haiti for the very latest. And I'm Olga Viverdi live in Little Haiti where thousands are celebrating Aristide's return to power. That story in just two minutes. I'm, La I'm Juan Fernandez live at Miami International Airport. The President and Mrs. Clinton arrive here in South Florida. I'll tell you why coming up. And it's a big weekend in college football. We'll tell you if the Gators managed to hold on to their number one ranking. I'm Craig Stevens. And I'm Lynn Martinez. 7 News at 6 is next. If you... Live from South Florida's news station, WSBN 7. This is 7 News at 6 o'clock. Our dream of democracy has become a reality. After three years and 15 days in exile, ousted Haitian President Jean Bertrand Aristide is back home. Good evening, everyone. It is a moment many Haitians thought they would never actually see. But it has finally come. History is made and hated today as President Jean Bertrand Aristide finally returns home. Crowds of supporters welcomed Mr. Aristide as he stepped onto Haitian soil this afternoon. This, of course, ends three years in exile for Aristide, who was ousted in a bloody coup back in 1991. 
Well, today, before he left from Andrews Air Force Base in Washington, he took one last opportunity to thank President Clinton for helping restore democracy in his country. Well, the celebrating started early this morning in South Florida's Little Haiti, and it's still going on strong. That's where we want to begin our Team 7 coverage tonight. 7's Olga Villaverde is in the middle of all of it right now, and she joins us live from Little Haiti. Olga, what's going on? Craig, I can tell you this party has not stopped. Just look over my shoulder, and you can see the number of people out here. The bands are still playing. I can tell you there are about 5,000 people out here. They've been singing. They've been dancing. Little Haiti looks more like a mega street party, and with reason. The Haitians now celebrating their long-awaited victory. They chanted this over and over again. Aristide, the country is yours. It's in your hands. Viva Aristide! Viva Democracy! I'm proud to see Aristide back to power. And they saw it on live TV, many still in disbelief. Jean Bertrand Aristide back home. Their dream, now a reality. We hope it's going to be better for the future. What do you want, Aristide? The atmosphere in Little Haiti totally upbeat. Thousands of Haitians singing, dancing, celebrating the historical day. We're going back to the power. They say it's been a three-year battle, but now a long-awaited victory. And what will that future hold? Well, many Haitians here say they can't predict the future, but they do believe that today marks the beginning of at least a better future in Haiti. And I can tell you the party here will continue all night long and all weekend long. These people say they have reason to celebrate. They've waited more than three years for this day, and they plan to use up all the time to say thank you. We're live in Little Haiti, and I'm Olga Villaverde, 7 News. Olga, thank you very much. Haiti's history has been filled, though, with turmoil, poverty, and fear. And for the last three years, they have been especially tough. Take a look for yourself. In February of 1991, Aristide is sworn in as Haiti's president and immediately announces the reorganization of Haiti's army. But just seven months later, in September of 1991, he is overthrown by a military coup. Then in July of 1993, Aristide and coup leader Raul Cedras signed a UN agreement calling for Aristide's return, and Cedras resigned. Later on that month, the UN Security Council announces the use of force clearing the way for the U.S.-led invasion. Then last month, U.S. troops begin the occupation of Haiti. And on Wednesday, Cedras leaves Haiti in a chartered jet and heads home for Panama. And today, more than three years after being ousted from power, Jean Bertrand Aristide is indeed back in command right now in Haiti. Team 7 coverage right now continues with 7's John Turchin. He is live in Port-au-Prince covering the big return of Aristide and has the latest on exactly what is going on there. John. Well, and what is going on right now is a lot of celebrating thousands of people in the streets, dancing, singing, ecstatic as you might expect, that their president has returned. And he returns in style. He arrives in style, a military escort. After three years and 15 days in exile, Jean-Betran Aristide is back on the job as president of Haiti. Heavily guarded by U.S. troops, Aristide moments earlier takes his first step on Haitian soil since the coup. President Aristide, how do you feel? After a brief ceremony at the airport, he is rushed to the National Palace. There, an anxious crowd numbering in the tens of thousands, most who fought the unbearable heat and the cramped conditions for hours, waited. The coup d'etat. We don't want it anymore. A 
salute from the military, the singing of the national anthem, and a wave and a kiss to the crowd. And in his native language, a renewed pledge. No to violence, no to vengeance, and yes to reconciliation. I love Words, of course, are not deeds, and there are no guarantees. The still unknown political observers say is whether Aristide has come to realize that he cannot rule successfully, he cannot govern this country successfully without first establishing at least a truce with Haiti's elite, the military, the business class, and the Roman Catholic Church. I think the toughest time has already gone. Now is the time, as President Aristide called for, called for reconciliation, I think this is the time where the most Haitians will show their goodwill. As Aristide releases the dove, the symbol of peace, he tells the crowd, today is the day on which the sun of democracy has arisen. And some timely news for Aristide. The United Nations today lifting the trade embargo, the international trade embargo against Haiti, which basically means that the economy that has been crippled for so long here will again be revived and that folks here in Haiti will again be able to trade freely with the rest of the world. Tonight we're going to take you into the streets, into the midst of the celebrations. But for now, I'm John Turchin reporting live in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. And John, thank you very much. A new Time Magazine CNN poll shows a majority of Americans tonight support sending troops to Haiti. The results show a major shift of opinion. 55% of those surveyed approve of the U.S. presence. That's compared to just 38% last month. President Clinton gets 54% approval rating on his handling of the Haiti situation. That's also up some 14 points. And that same survey is giving President Clinton his highest approval rating since mid-August. And Democrats are now hoping that this jump in numbers won't rub off on them in the November election. Tonight, the president, by the way, is in South Florida pushing for another Democrat, his brother-in-law. Seven Juan Fernandez is live right now at Miami International Airport, where the president landed just minutes ago. Juan. That's right, Lynn. The president and Mrs. Clinton arrived on time aboard this huge stretch 747 that you see behind me. We have video that we shot. He arrived at, he arrived at 5.55 p.m. Bill Clinton and his wife Hillary are here to support Democratic U.S. Senate candidates. One of those candidates is Hillary's own brother, Hugh Rodham. Tonight, the first couple will attend a $10,000 a plate dinner to help raise funds for Democratic candidates. For Rodham, though, it's an extremely tough race. He's currently running way behind in the polls against Republican incumbent Connie Mack. Now, before the dinner, Rodham will hold a rally at the Port of Miami with his sister and brother-in-law. Prices there a little bit more affordable, 10 bucks, believe it or not. But chances are you'll still have a tough time getting in. They have sealed the streets all along Bayside and the Port of Miami to make sure that his motorcade arrives safely. Now, if we can come back out here live, I can tell you that the last time that the president was in Miami was to meet with members organizing the Summit of the Americas taking place in December. We will, of course, stay out here, and as soon as he comes back, he will be leaving later on tonight around 10 p.m. We will show you those pictures, of course. Reporting live from Miami International Airport, I'm Juan Fernandez, 7 News. But one group in South Florida not exactly rolling out the red carpet for the president. Some 200 Cubans staging a protest outside of Miami International Airport this afternoon. Many of the Cubans say they want to show the president their outrage over the refugees now being held at Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. Protesters say they want the refugees released from that camp. Meanwhile tonight, members of the Free Cuba Foundation staging a candlelight vigil outside the Chrome Detention Center last night. Cuban Americans gathering in order to call attention to the ongoing crisis in their country. Demonstrators there also say they want to keep the refugees at Guantanamo Bay in the forefront of everybody's mind. Five days and the baby who suffered horrible sexual abuse allegedly by his own father is still alive tonight. Doctors tell us the three-month-old infant is in critical but stable condition tonight at Broward General Medical Center. Police say that the infant was raped by his own father. That's the man, 23-year-old Frank Beltran, is now being held without bond, charged with sexual battery on a child under 12 years old. A prayer vigil, by the way, will be held for that baby tomorrow night outside of the hospital. Police outside, or police on Miami Beach, I should say, are still on the lookout tonight for some HIV-infected blood samples. Police say 10 samples of the tainted blood disappeared from a private lab's night deposit box Wednesday. Health workers say it could pose a deadly health risk if these samples fall into the wrong hands. Anyone with any information is asked to call the Miami Beach Police Department. Still ahead on
on 7 News at 6 o'clock, violence breaking out in Israel one day after an Israeli soldier is killed in a raid. Investigators in England are trying to figure out what caused a horrible train wreck. And U.S. Defense Secretary William Perry praising U.S. troops in Kuwait as Saddam Hussein finally backs off. 7 News at 6, coming right back. You are watching 7 News at 6 with Craig Stevens and Lynn Martinez. 7 News brought to you in part by Bird's Eye, the fresh look for vegetables. You're so now, so bright, so you. Just mix things up a bit and create a stir. Bird's Eye, the fresh look for vegetables. What am I doing with you here this evening? You're my brother. You're helping me choose a car. So the Grand Am has 150 horsepower engine standard. It's a blast to drive, and it's got more power than the Accord or the Camry for thousands less. Airbag, anti-lock brakes? Standard, and the price is right. Now, drive home the hot-selling Grand Am for just $1.99 a month with the Pontiac 3-year smart drive. Smart choice. Thank you. So what am I doing here? You're helping me pick a color. Drive the new Grand Am at your Dave Broward Pontiac dealer today. In the Caribbean, everyone goes to the popular islands, but only Princess gives you more. A private island where no one else goes on every Caribbean cruise, where you have the wonders of the Caribbean all to yourself. If you'd like more from your cruise, sail with Princess. After all, it's more than a cruise. It's the love boat. news around the world tonight begins with more violence in Israel. Palestinians and Israeli soldiers clashing today after hearing that three Hamas guerrillas were killed, uh, who kidnapped an Israeli soldier, rather, had been killed in a raid. Protesters burned tires and hurled rocks at Israeli troops on patrol in the city. Officials say one Palestinian was seriously wounded in that rioting. This comes after Israeli commandos tried to free an Israeli soldier held hostage by the Islamic militant group Hamas Friday. During the failed raid attempt, the soldier held hostage was killed along with a second soldier and three of his kidnappers. England now five people are killed, 20 injured after a head-on collision between two trains outside of a southern village. A spokeswoman says that both trains had been on a single track at the time of the crash. Both train conductors are dead. Investigators are now looking into how the trains wound up on the very same track. Kuwait tensions are easing up a bit there tonight. U.S. Defense Secretary William Perry says half of the Iraqi troops near the Kuwaiti border are beginning to pull back. A good 25,000 troops moved outside the no-fly zone, the line set by the U.S. during the Gulf War. He also says rapid troop buildup in the Gulf has saved the world from a second Gulf War. Perry spoke to troops in Kuwait before departing for a three-day visit to China. Still ahead on 7 News at 6. If they did this in Singapore, they'd get caned for it, but some of South Dade's best young artists are using expensive cars as their canvases. That story is just ahead. And good evening, everybody. I'm Bill Kamal here in the 7 Weather Center. With the exception of the Keys, it turned out to be a sensational Saturday. Our luck may not hold up much longer. I'll explain why next. South Florida's news station. 7 News, closed captioning for the hearing impaired is brought to you in part by Waterbed City and City Furniture, the ultimate furniture store. This October is the cruelest month. What ever could take the place of this? Where will we ever find such beauty? Such monumental space. The fairest fruit of my countrymen. When will we ever again see such glory? Toyota Avalon, coming this November. If you're looking for trouble, you found it on the Fox Saturday Night lineup. First, cops takes you to the dark side of Tinseltown to crack a case that could only happen in Hollywood on a brand new Cops in L.A. Then, on America's Most Wanted, he was a neighborhood hero who put himself on the line more than once. <laughs> But this time, he was in the line of fire go. against one of America's most wanted. A brand new episode tonight after primetime cops. You're still making great lasagna. My son is making it now. I'll tell you, a while back, I didn't think there'd be a restaurant for him. This place, it's always busy. Well, it wasn't the problem. It was everything else. It was insurance and health plans. The guy at Payne River, he helped me out with all that. 
the stockbroker. I guess he set us up with a 401k. I guess he must really know how important this place is to your family. Yeah. Because he took the time to ask. Load it up and have a ball. Pontiac Transport Sky The roominess and convenience of flexible seating. Two, count them, two built-in child seats. Pontiac's exclusive power sliding door. Touch the button and let it slide. And the safety of standard airbag and anti-lock brakes. Pontiac Transport, it's got it all. What a beautiful Saturday it turned out to be, with the exception of the Keys, which has had clouds and a few showers around today, but 83 right now, mostly clear in Miami. Relative humidity, 51%. There's no heat index. In fact, it feels like 81 when you step outside with that northwest wind at 9 miles per hour. Much cooler to the north, there are a lot of clouds, and there's a developing gale center out in the Atlantic Ocean. This is a visible satellite picture. Look at all the clouds over North Florida. We've got two weather systems to contend with over the next couple of days. A huge area of fair weather building in from Canada and a big gale center, a big low, sitting off the mid-Atlantic coast. Lows have a counterclockwise circulation. Highs have a clockwise flow, and we're going to get a lot of wind. Already a coastal flood watch and a heavy surf advisory out for the east coast of Florida all the way down to Jupiter Inlet. And forget the west. They are inundated with clouds and rain and snow this weekend. But for us, that ocean storm and that big high-pressure area building in during the day tomorrow will increase the winds this time out of the north-northeast. And once that happens, we'll get the clouds in here. There may be a sprinkle, and it's not going to be as nice as today. But it will take place late in the day tomorrow. The UV index 6, there'll be quite a bit of sunshine to start the day. Sun up 720, sunset 652. Tonight, mostly clear, beautiful. Turn off the AC in the 60s. Clouds and showers should be clearing at the Keys in the next several hours. Mixture of sun and clouds tomorrow. More clouds toward the end of the day becoming breezy out of the north-northeast. Could be a shower late in the day, especially from the Atlantic coast right around the beaches, high of only 84. A small craft advisory may be necessary with those winds increasing out of the northeast. Seas building, inland waters becoming rough, and the surf temperature 83. We'll update this weather for you tonight on 7 News at 10. Lynn? Thank you very much, Bill. Some expensive cars got a new paint job today at the hands of student artists. Teams from Gulliver Prep and Westminster use the cars as canvas today in South Day. The contest is sponsored by South Motors as a tribute to the area's recovering of Hurricane Andrew. Students will compete for cash prizes in the two-month long competition. And pretty nice work there. Lovely. Still to come tonight on 7 News at 6 o'clock. Can the Gators hand the Auburn Tigers their first law? I would know, but Ken Rodriguez is next with all the highlights from the busy day in college football when we come back. So much steam, it gets out even the toughest wrinkles, quick and easy. The Surge Express Iron, from Black & Decker. Let's look in the dirty dictionary under R. Roverflow, the dry dog food that spills out of Rover's dish. Silmetary, the bug graveyard on your windowsill. Dustbusters, the definition of quick cleanup. Limited casinos and crime. The facts will surprise you. Fact. According to the FBI, Miami is ranked number two nationwide in violent crime. Tampa, number four. Las Vegas, all the way down at 80. 80. Fact. A study by a leading national criminologist from Florida State shows no link between casinos and crime. None. Fact. Politicians will try to blame crime on casinos. But with crime in Florida skyrocketing, maybe it's time we blame the politicians. These numbers will get you online with the 7 News Data Center. Email your comments today. 7 Sports, brought to you in part by Midas, the way it should be. Time for 7 Video Sports with Ken Rodriguez. Here we go, the top-ranked team in the nation lost for the first time this season. Gators hosting sixth-ranked Auburn at the Swamp was a 17-point favorite. Problem was, under head coach Terry Bowden, Auburn has yet to figure out how to lose. Auburn looking for a little respect and got it. Brian Robinson ripping the helmet off of Fred Taylor. That's the kind of game it was. Auburn got on the board first. Nicks to Thomas Bailey. 
Nice catch in the end zone. 7-0 Gators trailed for the first time this season. After an Auburn field goal, Gators came right back behind Terry Dean's pass and who else? Jack Jackson, a 42-yard play, 10-7, still first quarter. Overall, bad day for Dean. Here's the fourth of four interceptions. Dean got caught again. Dean leaves the game, enter Danny Werfel in the third quarter to lead the troops, and that he did. Werfel to Redell Anthony. Gators close the gap 22-20. Later, Werfel to Ike Hilliard. And the Gators have the lead, 26-22. The Tigers would not roll over in this one. Patrick Nix hits Andy Fuller for a 30-yard play, breaking some tackles along the way, ends up in the end zone. Auburn back on top, 29-26. Gators still had some life left in them. Werfel to Jack Jackson for his third touchdown pass of the half. Gators seemingly in control, but 51 seconds left for Nix. A completion on fourth and ten. Another completion. And with about 30 seconds left, Patrick Nix finds Frank Sanders for the game winner. Auburn wins it 36-33, their 18th win of the row. The nation's longest streak. They remain unbeaten. Gators fall to 5-1, and one, their first SDC loss at home in 18 tries. That left the second-ranked Huskers with a chance to move into the top spot. Another outstanding day for Lawrence Phillips, his seventh straight 100-yard game. Kansas State had their best chance ever against Nebraska with a quarterback, Chad May, leading the way. Hits Mitch running for the touchdown. Huskers clung to a 7-6 lead until Jeff Makovica scored with about 11 minutes left. Nebraska wins 17-6 there. 26th straight win over K-State. Heisman candidate Eric Zier carrying the weight of his team on his shoulders. 441 yards worth passing. This with a 21-yarder to Hassan Graham. Vanderbilt got the best of the Bulldogs, though. Eric Zier does not play defense. Jermaine Johnson would have run over him, too. 45 yards for the Vandy lead. Commodores with it, 43 to 30. Let's check out the scoreboard. Michigan driving for the score. Uh, Penn State uh, leading in that one in the fourth quarter, 24-17. Texas A&M beat Baylor big. And in the third quarter, Washington leading Arizona State. <laughs> Saturday edition of Friday Night Football, where Alex Fernandez was honored before the pace game with Key West. But it was Key West getting the honors into the end zone first. Alfonso Mounds taking care of business. But the Spartans, Spartans came right back. Gerard Jackson to Derek Rodriguez. No relation. Spartans came up with a safety two. Jason Theodore recovered the ball for two points. And then Gerard to Bryce Gillen. Pace wins 23-13, sending the Conks home with a two and five record. And a huge day at the Calder Race Course, the event appropriately named Festival of the Sun. Some of the country's best two-year-olds vying for some national recognition. There you have a, here you have a rear view of the horses entering the gate. We cover all the angles here. Let's cut quickly now to the home stretch. Listen to the call. They're in deep stretch now. It's golden invitation. Fortune pending on the outside. Fortune pending's up in time. She takes the my dear girl. Big win for her fortune pending. Miami Heat fans, you'll get another chance to catch the boys in action tonight at the West Palm Auditorium. They'll be going for two in a row against the Celtics to start the season. Last night, the rookie, Khalid Reeves, in his pro debut, takes it to the hoop. Watch him go. Scored only four points, but made David Wesley look silly, simply silly on this play. More importantly, Reeves had seven impressive assists, including this one to Matt Geiger. Needless to say, the Heat were impressed with the kid's performance. He did well. He did real well. It's always nerve-wracking, especially when you play at home. Exhibition game at home is really tough because, you know, you, should, you have to play your best in front of your home fans. I talk to Reed everything he knows. I hope not. I talk to Reed everything he knows. Yeah, with Halloween coming up, that's a real scary thought. All right, FIU's men and women's hoop teams getting started with their 94-95 campaign. Some of the players still had the moves, while others... Well, had a little rust. All-American Andrea Naj is uh, back for the Lady Golden Panthers. The team hopes to improve on last year's performance that included a trip to the NCAA tournament. Point at this point, if we were not in the top 20, uh, we have a returning team back, and we deserve to be there. And that's exactly where you want to be. I would hate to have to try to get in it through the season again. Uh, we'd like to be there in the beginning, and uh, we plan on staying there. And that'll do for sports. Craig and Lynn will be back right after this message. What am I doing with you here this evening? You're my brother. You're helping me choose a car. 
So the Grand Am has 150 horsepower engine standard. It's a blast to drive, and it's got more power than the Accord or the Camry for thousands less. Airbag, anti-lock brakes? Standard, and the price is right. Now, drive home the hot-selling Grand Am for just $199 a month with the Pontiac 3-year smart drive. Smart choice. Thank you. So what am I doing here? You're helping me pick a color. Drive the new Grand Am at your Dave Broward Pontiac dealer today. This is the best time of our lives. I do some opera singing, and my husband, Jim, is a violinist. I smell good. Let's have this one. And we both love to eat. For me, Stouffer's tastes like home cooking. Stouffer's macaroni and cheese right right is as good as my grandmother's. The Monacati has three different kinds of cheese. We eat Stouffer's because it's real good food. The kind I'd cook myself. Mm -hmm. for more things to be happy about. Aww. Grandchildren coming over. Sign language. Grandchildren going home. Model train. Mrs. Gelt's third grade class. Marching band. And a health plan designed to keep you healthy. Now that's something to be happy about. Be happy. Be healthy. Humana. Deep in the North Carolina pine, you'll find a place famous for PhDs and MVPs. Best known as the Research Triangle, the Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill area could also be known as a major financial center because it's served by Nations Bank, which means SAS Institute can have the latest in cash management. The Rogers can stay years ahead of their retirement investments, and everyone can have something to cheer about in the Research Triangle and in 1,900 other communities throughout our nation. That wraps up 7 News at 6 o'clock. Thanks so much for tuning us in tonight. I'm Craig Stevens. And I'm Lynn Martinez. We will see you at 10. Good night.